morning. Today I am on my way to Liffey Falls. Just going for a nice easy walk today. Just something quiet. And I've been to Liffey a few times so I thought this time I'd film it. So hopefully it's a nice day in there. It's absolutely glorious out here. It's nice and early. I think it's probably about quarter to seven. And there's, there's a farm of cows behind me, which you can probably hear. And there's an hot, a hot air balloon. You probably won't be able to see it. It's right over. There somewhere. But have a look at this. Glorious. So damn bright. But anyway, let's keep going and we'll get there. So we're at the trailhead and it is 7.30 and it says it's a three hour return walk, which is perfect. This is the little walk here, obviously we're here, so we're going to just walk down and then back, nice and easy and hopefully get some nice pictures and stuff along the way. So, it's very dark in here, it's um, well it feels dark to my eyes but the camera is not picking it up too bad. The sun will come over the hill in about, I don't know, an hour or so, so hopefully it'll start filtering through for some nice shots, but for the meantime, We'll just go for a wander. There's definitely been a storm through here. There's a lot of trees and branches and stuff down. Track just small stuff, so oh, that wasn't here last time. That would have made a big bang when it came down.
These are just massive. They would be over ten foot tall. This place is amazing. Look at this. All new growth. Right through here, these are all new ferns. It's just amazing. It's hard to describe, really. the house. So this walk, it's a pretty easy walk. I mean, the track is fairly flat most of the way. There's a couple of uphill parts, which I'm, whoops, which I'm coming to. And, um, cause you move away from the river a little bit and move towards, like go uphill and then curve back around, cross a little bridge and then head to the falls. So it's definitely not a hard walk. Um, very, I mean, easy enough for kids as well. Aside from the distance, it's, I mean, it's not far, but depending on how little their legs are, size of this it's an interesting tree not sure what it is, but the way it's growing is pretty cool. There's just, I don't think there's a room for any more ferns in this place. So this is what the track's like. There's little bits of boardwalk along the way, which is pretty cool. You get glimpse of, glimpses of the river as you kind of curve backwards and forwards towards it and away from it. And The sun's finally starting to break through, which is making everything just pop with colour. 
It's fantastic. I'm not sure how. I've got a stick this time. Not sure how far I am so far because I've been taking lots of pictures and filming and playing around with my GoPro trying to. I guess just trying to learn how to make the best videos that I can. And we're starting to go uphill now. So we might be maybe halfway. I can't quite remember, but even the uphill's not, not hard. It doesn't go for that long. Changes quite rapidly the kangaroo. The um the flora, the vegetation. I mean it's still very ferny but start to get a lot more trees. I don't know what a lot of them are but I'd really like to learn. I need to get it's like a tree identification book of some sort I suppose look at the size of that now that certainly would have made a bang when it come down even more so than that one at the start that is huge obviously been down for some time. Look at this, these ones are a little bit furry. Wow. Imagine the bugs and bits and pieces in there. Isn't that just glorious? I'll have to find out what I'm 99.9% .9 sure that that is Quamby Bluff. But I'm going to double check because I could be wrong. So I saw before just this massive stretch of these plants and I looked at them and they just looked really out of place and um, I had a feeling I knew what they were because I almost bought some the other day till I found out they were a weed but it's um, foxglove so they're a weed and they spread that easily they're spread by birds animals just the wind because each little flower has so much or so many seeds in them and one flower has oh, 20 or 30 separate little flowers which all have seeds in them so um, as soon as I saw it I knew that it didn't fit it wasn't quite right and then I worked walked a little bit further and found some that are actually in bloom so I'll show you that so there's a couple there and here's one a bit closer to the track so these are oh, I just broke my stick that's the flower and I'm not touching it I'm holding on to this fern because apparently they're known to be quite poisonous so up in each one of these 
a whole heap of seeds grow. And then they spread. Wow, you definitely wouldn't want to put your finger in there, would you? It even looks dangerous. Uh, and they're a beautiful plant, beautiful flower, amazing makeup, the way that they seed and everything like that. But because they're, because they have so many seeds, they're dangerous for places like this because they just take over um, and they can be poisonous for animals so I would assume if you get them before they dry out and seed then it would be easier to try and eradicate I've just crossed Queen's Creek. It's a nice little bridge that they've built there and beautiful little spot to stop and just have a little rest if you need to. Wow that sun is amazing. Very bright, sorry. Oh I left my stick behind. So we're going back up a little bit in the direction of Quamby Bluff, presuming that that's what it is. And we shouldn't be too far from the intersection where you can either go back up to the Liffey Fall, Falls car park, which is where a lot of people park then walk down whereas I've parked at the campgrounds walking up and around so we're not far from there I've been watching um watching a guy on YouTube his name is Lucas Chamberlain um, he's from Tassie and basically he's doing the Abel's well from my understanding plus just a lot of other areas. His videos are sort of short five five to ten minute videos but they're really informative and I find them really interesting because his knowledge of the mountains is just unbelievable. So jump on and check him out if you are looking for hikes to do in Tasmania. So there's the sign, so you can go up to Upper Liffey Car Park, which is 20 minutes, but we're going down to Liffey Falls. Oh, so it took, actually it took me an hour and a half with filming, so that's not bad. So we're going down to Liffey Falls, which is five minutes, nice and easy, and I'll be able to stop and have something to eat. nice little spot to sit. Be good to have a little picnic and stuff down there actually with the kids.
incredible, but oh my god, this is just fantastic. Like, unreal. That is incredibly slippery, but up in here it's not too bad. Just amazing. It's very, very slippery, but I can't wait to come back here and bring Juno so that we can go swimming. Probably down the bottom. But wow. I need to go and check that out if I can get across there. Let's see if we can film this going down here. If I can get over this wall. Oh god! <sighs> so you kind of go... I mean the only sketchy part is probably this bit here. Where you go under this wall, but it wasn't... And luckily for us, there's even a little hand, nature's made hand hole. Alright, and I'm back down. That's a good spot for this to swim out of. Well, if that wasn't flowing so hard, you could walk across there, but it'd be very slippery. Or you could walk across there if you were going swimming. I really want to go and have a look at that, but I think I might leave it for next time because it'll leave something to explore. But, wow. Myself a wrap. Made it last night. Feels a little bit soggy. Need a drink. Just got a wrap with some salad, cucumber, pork, bit of mustard, lettuce. I think it's the mustard that's made it go a bit soggy by the feels of it. I'm going to sit here and have some lunch. Here a while, 
have something to eat and drink. It's just, it's so hard to explain how beautiful a place like this is. And even though there's tracks coming into it and you know, people swim in it, it's still very much in its original state, which is amazing. Had some lunch. Well, oh Jesus. Um, I don't know if you call it lunch because it's only what time is it? It's 10 o'clock. So I'm gonna mosey on back now. Mosey on back, I might have a look at the little rock bed there. And then I'm gonna go and have coffee. My favorite thing to have when I, oh, excuse me, when I finish a hike. Here's a little riverbed. It's a little bit cute. So I thought I'll have a look. This would be a perfect spot actually to sit with a little blanket kids. They can have a play around on the rocks and that tree is literally being held up by nothing. The butterfly is on me. That is so cool. There's quite a few of them. So this is a foxglove that I was talking about, the big area of it. I've kicked a few of them out up there, like smaller ones that I could just knock out with my foot. So this is what they do. And they're just all up in there everywhere. I didn't notice those ones on my way through because it was a different angle, but... They're even up there, further up in the bush, which is definitely not good, but, but they're just everywhere. And if you can imagine every single one of those plants comes out like that flower that I showed before, that also has another 
300 seeds in it, well, you can imagine that they will take over fairly quickly. Well, back from my walk. Just having a sit down. This is usually where I camp when I do come here because it's nice and close to the creek. It's one of the flattest spots and it also gets the morning sun because I've gone around and sussed out every single camp spot and this one here is my favourite. Um, the one down the bottom, if you're driving it on your right, is absolutely gorgeous. It's got a really nice little flat spot by the river and it'll be perfect to hang your hammock up in. But um, it took me 50 minutes to get back. That was including the little play around at the uh, little beachy rock area with the butterflies, which I didn't think was too bad. So I think the hour and a, oh, the three hours return is very, very generous. It took me an hour and a half to get in there. So that would have taken me to nine. And then I left there at 10 and got back at 10.50. So I was there for an hour and you could easily spend a lot longer there but I think the three hours would be fair to say in there and back spend some time there not including filming and stuff it is definitely a generous time but it's not something that you want to rush either like I took my time going in and then come out fairly quick because I didn't need to do any more filming or anything like that because it's all the same, same way back. Oh, I don't know why I'm so itchy. Just brushing past the ferns and stuff, I think, all those little spores probably. I was going to sit and have a coffee, but I'm a bit warm, so I just went and filled up my bottle at the in the river. And there's only maybe one or two specks of dirt. Never heard anyone. So I'll call this the end of the video. I'm gonna go and have a bit of a play around with my GoPro in the water with what's left of the batteries. Um, but I'll call this the end. So thank you for watching. And nice, quick, simple, easy walk. But very, very enjoyable. Those falls were fantastic. So definitely worth a look. Um, and again, thank you for watching. And I'll see you next time. Toodaloo.